All right. So we've already talked about this whole process right here, okay? Where we go from ribose 5-phosphate, we turn that into PRPP. That was through the action of PRPP synthetase. What we didn't go over is this step right here, PRPP to 5-phosphoribosylamine. That's this enzyme 1 right here, okay? This enzyme, PRPP amidotransferase, as it's often called, or glutamine PRPP amidotransferase, is an allosteric enzyme. So we have an allosteric enzyme right here at the very start of this pathway, okay? Glutamine PRPP amidotransferase is going to be a very important control point, okay? And then we're going to go through a series of steps to make IMP. That's the first level of regulation. It turns out that these two enzymes right here, uh, PRPP synthetase and PRPP amidotransferase, we regulate those two enzymes mainly because they're at the very start of the pathway. Because if we don't want to go into purine synthesis, then we need to allosterically inhibit both these enzymes to prevent purine synthesis from even starting. But it turns out that once we get to IMP, which is the branch point towards either AMP or GMP, there's two more levels of regulation. And as we would expect, they're at the start, the first enzyme in each of the branches, okay? Now, that first enzyme to go to AMP synthesis is adenylosuccinate synthetase, and to go towards GMP, it's going to be IMP dehydrogenase. Okay, let's first talk about this first part of the, of the regulation. The first level is, at the, is before the level of IMP. All right, so we're talking about the regulation of PRPP synthetase and glutamine PRPP amidotransferase. All right, it turns out that for PRPP synthetase, there's one main regulatory molecule, and that's adenosine diphosphate, or ADP. It turns out that high levels of ADP will inhibit PRPP synthetase, okay? Because if, the, if we have high levels of ADP, that's going to indicate that the cell is in low energy charge or low energy level. If we had high ATP, ATP and things like that, the triphosphates would indicate high energy level. And remember, high energy level is when we do biosynthesis like this. But if we're in low energy, meaning we have lots of ADP, we don't need to be doing biosynthesis, so it makes sense that ADP would turn this enzyme off. And that's the main molecule, ADP, that regulates PRPP synthetase. All right, so we can turn this enzyme off. But it turns out we can also allosterically turn off or inhibit glutamine PRPP amidotransferase. And it turns out that all of the end products of this pathway inhibit PRPP amidotransferase. The IMP that we made at the end of this 10-step process, that IMP can inhibit PRPP amidotransferase, but it turns out that the final two end products downstream, AMP and GMP, can also inhibit glutamine PRP amid PRPP amidotransferase. And that also makes sense, right? Because this, what this is saying is that because these are the end products, particularly AMP and GMP, is that if I ha already have plenty of these, if I have plenty of AMP or plenty of GMP floating around, then that's an indication that I don't need to make any more of this, right? I don't need to do purine synthesis because if I have high levels of AMP, GMP, or IMP, why do I need to make any more purines? There's already plenty of those precursors, these three around. There's plenty of those around. I don't need to make purines, so I'm going to shut this enzyme off, glutamine PRP, P amidotransferase. So AMP, GMP, and IMP will inhibit this enzyme, okay? Now the second level of regulation is post-IMP, or post-inosinate. And that's at these two enzymes, the first two enzymes each in um, each of these branches, AMP and GMP. For AMP synthesis, the committed step is adenylosuccinate synthetase, and for GMP, the committed step is IMP dehydrogenase, all right? Now, I want you to notice something. Look here. AMP, which is the product of, well, it's the end product of this left pathway, AMP is going to inhibit its own synthesis, right? AMP is going to inhibit adenylosuccinate synthetase. So why is that important? Well, that's important because if there's already enough AMP, then we don't need any more AMP. So it's going to inhibit itself. But that doesn't necessarily mean, if there's plenty of AMP, that there's plenty of GMP. So why would you not expect AMP to inhibit this enzyme, IMP dehydrogenase? Well, AMP should not inhibit IMP dehydrogenase because 
AMP in no way is a sensor for the GMP levels. AMP should only inhibit its own synthesis, because if there's already plenty of AMP, we only need to turn off AMP synthesis, if that makes sense. All right? Because just because we have high levels of AMP, that does not mean we have high levels of GMP. Okay? So it inhibits its own synthesis. GMP is also going to do a similar thing to its own synthesis. GMP can also inhibit its own synthesis. So GMP can come back and inhibit IMP dehydrogenase. Okay, But just like before, GMP is not going to inhibit adenylosuccinate synthetase. Because just because we have high GMP, that does not mean we have high AMP. It could be the opposite. So GMP is only going to inhibit its own synthesis. If we already have GMP, then turn off the synthesis of GMP. But don't necessarily turn off the synthesis of AMP. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And just remember, it's the initial two enzymes, the first one in each of these branches from IMP, that is the allosteric enzyme. All right. Now, it turns out that... Glutamine PRPP amidotransferase does not necessarily get turned off by one of these. Okay, Let's suppose that the levels of GMP and IMP are low, but AMP is high. Well, AMP will inhibit this enzyme, but it will only slow it down a little bit. Okay, So, in other words, if we only have high AMP, PRPP amidotransferase will be slowed down a little bit. If two of those, maybe AMP and GMP, are high, then it'll be slowed down a lot more. So there's different levels of being slowed down for PRPP amidotransferase. So the point is, even if you just had high AMP, it won't totally turn the enzyme off and make it inactive, but it'll at least slow it down, all right? But arguably, the, some of the most important levels of regulation are down here. Because if I have high AMP, I don't need any more AMP, so I'm going to turn off adenylosuccinate synthetase. If I have high GMP, I don't need any more GMP, so inhibit IMP dehydrogenase. Okay, So I think this is kind of a nifty way of regulating purine synthesis, and hopefully it makes a little bit of sense. All right? So that was the pretty much the end of purine synthesis that we're going to talk about here. And in the next video, we're going to go over pyrimidine synthesis. All right? So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.